today we will discuss on the first chapter karma in its effect on character karma yoga so meghna please read from okay um so chapter 1 karma in its effect on character the word karma is derived from the sanskrit kri to do is all all action is karma technically this word also means the effects of actions in connection with metaphysics it sometimes means the effects of which our past actions were the causes but in karma yoga we have simply to do with the word karma as meaning work the goal of mankind is knowledge this is the only ideal placed before us by eastern philosophy pleasure is not the goal of man but knowledge pleasure and happiness comes come to an end it is a mistake to suppose that pleasure is the goal the cause of all the miseries we have in this world is that men think men foolishly think pleasure to be the ideal to strive for after a time man finds it is not happiness but knowledge towards which he is going and both and that both pleasure and pain are great teachers and that he learns as much from the evil as from good as pleasure and pain pass before his soul they have upon it dif different pictures and the result of these combined impressions is what is called man's character if you take a character of any man it is really it really is but the aggregate of tendencies the sum total of the bent of his mind you will find that misery and happiness are equal factors in the formation of that character good and evil have an equal share in molding character and in some instances misery is a greater teacher than happiness in studying the great characters the world has produced i dare say in the vast majority of cases it would be found that if it was misery that taught more than happiness it was poverty that taught more than wealth it was blows that taught taught that brought out our inner fire more than praise that was the first paragraph hmm so ananya read the first sentence ananya okay the word karma is derived from the sanskrit kri to do all action is karma so both of you know sanskrit is it yeah Reading, i am writing it. speaking i have learned little bit i can understand some some basic sanskrit and gokul uh, just some basics mera main so my knowledge of sanskrit is i didn't study formally but mainly by reading gita and word by word translations like learn picked up some sanskrit hmm. in sanskrit like uh, other classical languages like greek latin arabic these are all classical languages in sanskrit also or hebrew uh, in sanskrit also every word is derived from a root word so there is one root word and that root word gives rise to many words similarly here karma is the word we are talking about karma that is the word now karma is derived from the root kri kr actually it is kr kri from that karma has come and kri means to do anything which is even remotely connected with action is karma karma so that that comes from that so kriya there are so many words out of the same root kriya karma etc etc now that word has come from this idea of action and then swami ji says technically this word also means the effects of actions so karma can mean both action and the effect of action there are two effects one is the immediate effect suppose you do something it will immediately produce a result 
and then there is a result which is in the form of impression on the mind or the mind stuff which is called chitta so there there are two uh, levels of uh, results of the any action one is suppose you are cooking you cook and you make the food that is the immediate result or suppose you are studying something you get the information that is the immediate result but the very process of studying makes an impression on your mind and that is the long lasting result so that is called also karma so when you study you do a karma and you produce an immediate karma of knowing something and you have a long lasting karma also of getting that impression of that study so you you have a tendency inside you created if you eat a particular food you create a tendency of eating that food inside you is there anything you want to add to because this if you if we can understand this the core concept of the first two lines then we understand how we can understand how karma works i have one question hmm. uh, can i ask no you didn't know questions are all should not be asked <laughs> okay so i wanted to ask um so in bhagavad gita there is one line that krishna says nothing is ever a waste so i i don't know which particular verse it is from but there is one verse which roughly translates to nothing is ever a waste what whatever you do it so it basically means that all our karma is going to have some or the other effect however i have found that say whatever i studied in college i have already forgotten it so it has already been undone whatever has been done has already been undone by the universe in the way that it it just with with passing time i have already forgotten that and it has already been a waste whatever i studied has been a waste already it has already been dumped into the trash can and there's nothing i can do with that knowledge which i had studied say in the first semester or say in first standard or second standard or something some or some how can nothing be a waste if every if karma has some effect and if it's already imbibed into the character and like you got my question how it has already been wasted how can it not be a waste that is why i said that you have to understand the correct meaning of the first two sentences if you understand you know how karma works first of all coming to the shloka that shloka was uh, told or that particular statement was told by shri krishna in the particular context of spiritual practices he says don't worry even if you do a little spiritual practice that will not go waste from wherever you have left in this lifetime in the next mm-hmm. lifetime you will take over from the very particular stage of spiritual mm-hmm. practice so that was told in a particular context of spiritual practice but even in the case of karma that is true nothing goes waste now that is why we read that or uh, we were uh, talking that there are two types of effects of any action one is the immediate effect so when you study for example you get the information that is the immediate effect so you may say that that effect has gone away yes that effect will not stay that has gone for example when you are cooking you cook and then uh, you eat hmm. and it has gone away so hmm. that cooking the result of cooking in the form of a food has gone waste hmm. but there is an impression of cooking and hmm. of eating on hmm. your mind that will never go away okay unless you get god realization or unless your whole mind is dissolved this impression will not go away similarly you have studied engineering say and in uh, whatever you studied in the first semester of engineering you forgot mm-hmm. the information the immediate result you forgot but mm-hmm. the samskara or the tendency to study engineering has not gone away yeah so how do we know that say there will be 10 disciplines which you can study maybe in the next lifetime if you have a next lifetime that is so you will be more prone or inclined to study engineering hmm. and in the engineering also what engineering did you do bioengineering so you will have more inclination to do bioengineering so that tendency that long term tendency has not gone away hmm 
Yeah. Okay. So all actions have two uh, results. First is you do the action that itself is karma. Then it mm -hmm. has got its effect, which has got two uh, um, uh, stages. One is the immediate effect in terms of producing some effect, like in cause and effect. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that is there. And then there is the long-term effect, which is creating a tendency on your mind. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Gokul, you have anything to say? No, Maharaj. We can continue. Okay, then what is the next step? What is the next line? Oh, should I read? Gokul, Gokul. Whereas? What is the next line? Technically, this word also means the effect effects of actions. Yeah, that we have covered. Next line. Yes. In connection with metaphysics, it sometimes means the effects of which our past actions were causes where the causes so this we have understood right yeah so you see karma has got now we up till now we saw three meanings of karma one is the action you do that is karma then the immediate result is also karma and the long standing effect is also karma okay so three meanings but Say after 10 years, when you look at a bioengineering book, Meghna feels, oh, this is something which is attracting me. Mm -hmm. So at that point, she can say, it is my karma which is making me attracted to this book of bioengineering. So this is the fourth definition of karma. That means the effect of past actions, the effect, the long term effect of past actions when you get that effect that is called as karma we say it is my karma that i have to suffer so much so i have done so much karma it means we have done something in the past it could be in this very life or in previous lifetimes so there are four kinds of definitions of karma one is action itself then the immediate result then the long standing effect on your mind and when you are actually getting the result suppose you are sitting in a cinema theater and somebody comes and slaps you and goes away you don't know that person if the person is total stranger then you say what happened i did not i don't know this person and that person doesn't know me and simply came and slapped me because of some action which you did in the past that you cannot remember that you cannot correlate with the effect hello yes does the fourth version mean the same thing as prarabdha? Yeah, it could be pra There are four, three types of karma. One is sanchita karma, the collective effect of actions you have done in the past. It is called sanchita karma. Then another one is the karma which is going to be uh, coming into effect in the near future, in the near or next birth. That is called agami karma. And the karma which is already taking effect, it is called prarabdha karma. So the imagery or example given is that there is a archer, a person who uh, shoots arrows. So he has got a quiver full of arrows, a stock of arrows. That is sanchita karma. And the arrow that he has kept on his bow ready to shoot, that is agami karma. And the arrow that he has already shot is prarabdha karma. Once again, what is Sanchita Karma? Sanchita Karma is the store of all the actions which you have done in the past. The effect of all those actions is stored and it will get exhausted as and when the particular circumstances are available, which are suitable for exhausting that particular karma. That is called Sanchita Karma. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but what? Nothing. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah. So why I got this question is in 
वन ऑफ होली मदर्स बुक्स आय थिंक आय हॅव रेड शी टोल्ड दॅट इवन दो वी प्ले टू नॉट बट वॉट एव्हर इज अर प्रायव्हेट वी हॅव टू मीन्स अंडर गो दॅट मीन्स इफ इट इज बॅड Yeah, but she says that if you if you pray to God, then if the, uh, your heads were to be cut off, there will be only a small uh, uh, injury to your head. So prayer to God helps in reducing the intensity of the effect of whatever you were to suffer. Okay. 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 So read Ananya next line, but. ओके हॅलो या सो बॅक इन कर्मयोगा वी हॅव सिम्पली टू डू विथ द वर्ड कर्मा एज मिनिंग वर्क द गोल ऑफ मॅन काइंड इज नॉलेज दॅट इज द वन ओके 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 स्लोली स्लोली सो ही सेज दॅट देर आर देर कुड बी फोर मिनिंग्स ऑफ कर्मा बट इन कर्मयोगा व्हेन वी आर डूइंग कर्मयोगा एज अ प्रॅक्टिस एज अ स्पिरिच्युअल प्रॅक्टिस then we have to concentrate only on, on the meaning of work so we have to do all our action as a spiritual practice karma yoga yoga means that which enables us to understand our true reality the path which enables us to understand our true personality that is yoga so here when we are talking about karma yoga we should restrict ourselves to the meaning of karma as action whatever action we do that is karma yoga not that's not karma yoga that is karma so how to create our karma into karma yoga that is the challenge actions everybody can perform but how to turn it in such a manner that that will lead me to god or that will lead me to understand my true personality that is the challenge so here for all purposes we will just see the word karma to mean work okay now meghna read further but my ji i have one question here and this karma yoga right we tell that everything we should turn into spiritual practice but it is very difficult because sometimes you can't uh, register instant reaction suppose i get angry over someone because someone did something so it is very difficult at that time to remember Mm. So what work you are doing now? Means I didn't get. What is your designation now? Okay, a uh, software developer. Tell. Hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So what did you study for that? I studied uh, computer science engineering. From where did you do it? I did uh, my B.Tech from uh, IEM in Kolkata and then Masters from IIT Guwahati. Oh, you did an IEM in Kolkata, Salt Lake? Yeah. Okay. When did you study? When did you pass out? Uh, 2009. Okay, so you uh, studied. So for that, did you have to give any entrance to get into IEM? Yes, yes uh, joint entrance right in our state. Uh, oh how many people applied for that no uh, that i'm not sure <laughs> but uh, some thousands i think from 50000 at least not in lakhs and how many people mm. got mm, yeah that that i mean everyone i think will get a rank so but whether they will get a good college or not that depends on the rank no no but how many people clear the exam Okay, uh, that statistics I don't have, uh, but I think um, maybe around thirty thousand to give rent till thirty thousand I think. So here also fifty thousand appeared according to you, and according to you maybe thirty thousand people cleared the examination. So if that is the case of a paltry uh, engineering degree, then do you think that you will be able to simply clear something like PhD or something? And even if so how difficult it is to get into an iit so similarly how difficult it would be to understand spiritual truths and how difficult to practice them so why are 
are we even talking about something being difficult? Isn't it what we always try to do? We always sit for competitions. We always try to do things which are difficult. We never even think that oh, it is difficult. But when it comes to spirituality, we always say, Maharaj, it is difficult. Why? Yeah, Maharaj. So uh, my question was for means how we should do that? Yes, uh, since we sometimes can't help the instant reaction. So how should we do that? Hmm. That is already explained in Bhagavad Gita by Sri Krishna that we have to do it by dispassion and practice. Vairagya and uh, abhyasena to vairagya. Abhyasena to kaunteya vairagya na cha grihiyate. This mind is controlled by abhyasa, practice and also by dispassion. Okay. So, uh, the goal of mankind is knowledge. Is it true? Yes. Megna, is it true? Uh, maybe. Maybe. From yes, maybe. Some progress. Google, is whether this is true? The goal of mankind is happiness and knowledge, according to me. Happiness. Okay. Yes. Google, is this true? Yeah, uh, yeah this is true. This so Gokul, what do you do now for a living? I uh, work in a company, Maharaj. Yeah, it was so explanatory. Means in which company do you work? What work do you do? <laughs> in uh, a company called Sonim Technologies. Uh, what do you do there? I'm a general manager. Now, what does the company do? Company does mobile phones. Okay. So now you are working in this field and you meet so many people and you, you because you are in an administrative position, you have to manage so many people, you have to get work done and all that. So how many people on a on an average basis, per daily basis, do you meet who say that my goal in life is to get knowledge? Not many. Uh, oh, you so, people, is it like that? So, actually, like that—that that, that is a constant uh, tussle because uh, always people, uh, whenever uh, there's a complaint, okay, this is not happening, that is not happening, then uh, if we explore the reason, then actually whatever Swamiji says will be the will be the truth. Like, uh, so if if people are uh, looking at uh, the short-term things as their goal, then there will always be problems and complaints about that and the advice she always says okay look at long term things will be fine man. so when you have a long term perspective then uh, actually things get sorted out okay so Swamiji says that the goal of humankind is mankind is knowledge but then we hardly see anybody who says that my goal is knowledge everybody says my goal is RKM you know what is RKM no uh, <laughs> you have listened somewhere else, uh, you know. Yeah, I watched your videos on YouTube. Kharapu, uh, right? You, so, I think, gave lecture. RKM means roti kapada or mukhan. So, why Meghna, you have put off your video? So, now RKM is there. So, everybody is running after RKM. More, uh, better clothing, better shelter and better houses and better spouses, etc. So, where do we see people who are running after knowledge? We don't see. So, did Swamiji tell something which is wrong? No, just because context, uh, majority of people don't are running behind RKM does not uh, say that is right. So, the way I look at it is this. Uh, the People say the, there is a lot of problems, complain about problems and uh, about all this uh, ups and downs on, of life. And uh, the basic the assumption people have is uh, that the uh, goal of life is uh, pleasure. And that is why people complain about the world is not an ideal place. Now, uh, the very fact that uh, the world is uh, different from what their expectation that is, uh, even people expect that pleasure is the goal of life. Now, the state of the world is not uh, uh, in line with that. Means that 
go that particular fact is not right whereas if we say like okay pleasure is not the goal of life wisdom is the goal of life then whatever happens in the world all the ups and downs of life and whatever happens in the world is uh, uh, automatically aligns to that particular goal so looking at uh, what nature so what is you're telling is that is, if i say that pleasure is the goal of life what actually happens in the life doesn't always give me pleasure so it does not uh, match up to the reality but if i say that wisdom is the goal of life then even if i get suffering i am becoming wiser and wiser yes so okay. so observing observing the world the way world is and the way life is uh, the logical conclusion we can arrive at is that the knowledge is the goal of life so whether you p- get pleasure or suffering you will always get knowledge yes yes there yeah. you can so never go suppose you go to a place and you want to purchase something and you purchase a mobile phone which is not working you get the knowledge that this brand you should not purchase yes I yes got the point yes yes yes, yes. so like this so that means uh, uh, but uh, everybody doesn't say that everyone doesn't say that I, uh, the goal of life is wisdom why do yeah, that's what say- No, that, that, that is the that is the ignorant that is, that is the avidya so and just because and here in the truth doesn't go by majority right yeah ananya is telling something yeah so what i feel is that according to swami ji right everyone is uh, going towards truth but uh, had a low of truth to higher truth right so whoever are uh, going towards pleasure they will also in the course of time uh, get to the same realization that it is not the goal of uh, it cannot be the goal of life so they are in that too you can think relatively mm. so actually everyone is going towards knowledge but only thing is they are now saying that we want pleasure but ultimately they will go towards knowledge only thing they don't know that that is the idea they are not aware of that yes mm. actually actually yes. when people say that uh, they want roti kapda makan or whatever they what they actually is, they have been deluded into thinking that getting roti kapda and makan will get them happiness so they actually ultimately want happiness but they think that acquiring these things will get them happiness that they actually want but once they get them they will still may not be satisfied so in the process of acquiring roti kapda makan they are actually getting knowledge that this is not going to satiate them and though though their ultimate goal in life is happiness they are getting there through the path of knowledge by, by gaining more and more knowledge and wisdom about how all these things are really not necessary in getting knowledge sorry in does getting that, um, happiness does that mean that to know that something is useless you should first get that thing uh yes <gasps> no I think no. Is that it? Cannot talk. Okay, but what we understand now is though except but the goal of mankind or humankind is knowledge. Then what is the next sentence? That is the one ideal placed before us by eastern philosophy. Oh, you are more confused. that is the one ideal placed before us by eastern philosophy so what western philosophy is not giving that ideal huh? we don't know western philosophy as much as we like we try to read vivekananda and we try to understand eastern philosophy but western philosophy we don't know all that much no who is this we i okay uh, what gokul what do you say swami ji is saying that is the one ideal placed before us by eastern philosophy why does he say this western philosophy doesn't give that idea hmm western philosophy was never quite as advanced as the oriental philosophy racist thing to tell such a racist person i'm not talking about races i'm just talking about the parts of the world east and west same all. thing same thing okay <laughs> Don't sugarcoat. Don't sugarcoat. So damaging, no? I think. I mean, if you see the way it's right, they are trying to explore more on the outer. Uh, I mean, more about the outer world. So the philosophy also maybe I mean, a bit different from ours because we are looking at the inner world more.
on the eastern front of it. So in West there was no religion? No, there was religion, there is religion, but um, but the philosophy might be different. Yes, there is religion, but no spirituality. No, spirituality also is there. Spirituality is everywhere. Um, and, uh, so, but I have not gone, I have not gone through Western philosophy, so I am not sure what they wrote. The greatest saints of the world have been produced in the West. So, how can one say that uh, West does not have, uh, they have gone only to the outside thing and not for the inside thing? That is a very There are actually some very uh, spiritual Christians that I have met in the West. That is definitely true. They have very good, I mean, uh, they explore more into the religion than we Indians do. Though we have this... Again, a blanket like statement. People like this. this is again a huh? blanket statement. This is a blanket comparison. They do more than we do. No, I don't think we can. No, no, no. Everywhere there are Christian study, Bible study groups and these things. So it's very easy for, like if I were a Christian, it would have been very easy for me to get into one of those groups. But here in uh, India, being a Hindu majority nation, it is very difficult to find groups and get into groups and try to do things on a regular basis. Hmm. Anyway, you have to go looking for that group. I'm not even trying to go into that area. Let it be aside because it will be a big digression. Uh, yes. So what Swamiji says is that is the one ideal place before us by Eastern philosophy. In Eastern philosophy, particularly the Indian tradition and also other traditions like Chinese and the Japanese and the Southeast Asian traditions, all places you will see one thing common. That is fourfold ideals of life. What are they? Dharma, uh, uh, artha, uh, kama and moksha. Kama, moksha yeah. Dharma means righteousness, artha means wealth or uh, um, fulfillment of uh, sense objects etc. pleasure and then uh, sorry artha means wealth yeah artha means wealth. wealth and then kama means fulfillment of pleasures and then moksha liberation. So this idea of liberation from the constant cycle of birth and death is predominant in Eastern philosophies. Okay, but generally, generally Western philosophy talks about truth, beauty, and goodness. It truth, beauty, talks and goodness. About truth, beauty, and goodness. So here we are talking about knowledge, and that is the ideal because that is the one ideal place before us by Eastern philosophy because moksha means knowledge of yourself. What is moksha? Moksha is a knowledge of yourself without any doubt. We say God realization, realization of Atman Brahman. What does it mean? It is a state where you have no more doubt about your own personality. That is moksha. So that moksha is the ultimate ideal of Eastern philosophies. But in the West, that is not how it is portrayed. Where truth, beauty and goodness are told to be the cardinal values or the important values. So that difference Swamiji is hinting at, is showing here. Yeah. Okay. Now, because the fourfold goal, first you have righteousness, then from righteousness, in a righteous manner you acquire wealth and with that wealth which you have acquired in a righteous manner, you have some pleasure and then after that give up pleasure and just attain knowledge. So the ultimate goal of life is really knowledge or wisdom. Okay, Meghana, so next line. But, um, pleasure. No, what, what Gokul is telling something. So uh, whatever you said, like uh, truth, beauty and goodness, though not as an ultimate goal, but as an intermediate goal, it is there uh, in the East also, no matter. Like, so what they, I told is Satyam, that it is Satyam not, Shivam Satyam Sundaram, Sundaram like Sundaram. Satyam hmm. Shivam Sundaram. The, hmm. that is same. Truth, beauty is uh, Sundaram, and Shivam is goodness. So Satyam Shivam yes. Sundaram is there in Indian Eastern uh, context also. But that is not the ultimate. That is the idea. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Here, the as an intermediate goal we accept. In philosophy, that is shown as the ultimate. 
Here, that is not the ultimate. That is the idea. Okay, what is the next line? The next line is, um, pleasure is not the goal of man, but knowledge. Pleasure and happiness come to an end. It is a mistake to suppose that pleasure is the goal. Yes. So here you see, now Swamiji becomes more universal. He is not telling that uh, it is just Eastern philosophy. He says, pleasure is the goal of man, including women, means human beings. Okay. Those days that was not the convention. So everywhere you will see man, but you have to read it as human beings. So pleasure is the goal of human beings, not the goal of human beings, but knowledge is the goal of human beings. Pleasure and happiness come to an end. It is a mistake to suppose that pleasure is the goal. So anything which will end should not be our goal because then our goal will not be achieved because it will be there for some time and then it will end. We should need a goal which will be permanent, which will remain. So we should strive for knowledge because knowledge will always remain. Anything anybody has to say here? Hmm? I have a question. Yes. So, um, I have heard some of the Samjis say that whenever, whenever I've asked, asked, asked a question, they've said that the more you do bhoga, the more you will be drawn towards that and you, are, you will develop tendencies towards yoga. But then the more you do yoga, the more you will be uh, drawn towards yoga. So as, when you are doing yoga and if you are tempted by bhoga, then what do you do then? Like Abstain. What? Abstain. Okay. There is, you see, the only way to give up smoking is to not smoke. Hmm. The only way to give up alcohol is not drink. So the only way to give up enjoyment is by giving up enjoyment, not enjoy. Actually, there is this, some of my friends, uh, especially they are, they are very drawn to this Buddhist concept called self love. That is doing just about what you find happiness in. So they, they just, I mean, the whole idea just puts them off track in such a way that they totally cannot distinguish see, Buddhism, between their ego and their... Buddhism, Buddhism yeah. what Lord Buddha told has hmm. been diluted in many traditions. Buddhism has yeah. got now like so many traditions. Okay. Yeah. Lord Buddha did not talk about indulging in oneself. Hmm. And that self-love is not the smaller lowercase s, but the uppercase s. That means your ultimate personality. So hmm. it, is, it is Atma Deepo Bhava. That is what Buddha said, that you be the light to yourself. He did not say that you indulge in yourself, not self-indulgence. Okay, so this uh, Buddhism has been, uh, because of uh, trying to give it more popular shape, many people are unfortunately uh, diluting the messages of message of Lord Buddha in a very, very bad and a very convoluted way. So that was never, Buddha is the, even Swamiji says, Buddha is the ideal of renunciation. He is the model of renunciation. So uh, that Buddha can never preach that you do whatever you like. Because you don't like anything, your mind likes, your tendencies like. Yeah. So you have to give up. And we have so many examples. In the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Ramakrishna says that, that there was one husband who was doting on his wife, always, uh, uh, he was like henpecked, like he was always moving around his wife and all that. And so one day uh, his wife told, ah, what, you always move around me and you are also doting on me. You see the other person, he had got four wives or something and one by one he is giving up, one by one, one, one wife he is giving up. So this person was, had uh, oil on his head and he was about to go on walk, uh, bath, to take bath. And he had towel on his shoulder. He said, oh, is that how one gives up? One doesn't give up like that. One gives up just like that, all of a sudden. And he said, okay, now I give up. And he just went away. He just left his house. So that is how you renounce. Not that slowly, slowly I will renounce. You will not renounce. That will only become like Mark Twain. 
He said, I stopped smoking. Oh, stopping smoking is very simple. I stopped it 100 times in my life. So, he stopped smoking 100 times in his life. Mark Twain. So, that is what? You cannot give up enjoyment by enjoying. You can give up enjoyment only by not enjoying. Only by abstinence. There is no other okay. So, pleasure and happiness come to an end. It is a mistake to suppose that pleasure is the goal. The cause of all the miseries we have in the world is that men foolishly think pleasure to be the ideal to strive for. So why you suffer? Why do we suffer? Because we go after something like pleasure and we do not get it and that will make us miserable. Why do we suffer Gokul? Yeah, and Un, uh, unfulfilled expectations. Yeah. So either uh, we things which you don't like come or things which we like go away. Ananya, why do we suffer? Ananya. Hello. Hello? Hello? Why do you suffer? I think uh, because we run after pleasure. So we want to Mr. suffer. That is why we suffer. We get suffering because we want suffer. Did you get that? We want. So we suffer. So we suffer. Yes. And so we suffer. Because of desire, we suffer. This Gokul, uh, how much Tamil have you read, studied? What is? How much Tamil have you, have you ever studied Tamil in school? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Tamil, uh, I uh, studied a second language. Whereas. Till what standard? Ah, till, uh, 11, till 12th, I studied a second so, language. So you know Thirukural? Ah, yes, Maharaj. Yadanin Yadanin Ningyan Nodal Adanin Adanin Ilan. What is the meaning? Yadanin Yadanin Ningyan Nodal Adanin Adanin Ilan. Okay. So Yadanin Yadanin. From whatever Ningyan you remove nodal attachment. So from uh. whichever things you remove attachment, Adanin Adanin. From that things, those things, Ilan, you will have no suffering. Awesome. Yeah. This Thiruvalluvar says in one of his couplet, Thiruppural, there are 1330 couplets, just like Kabir Doha in Tamil, written in 130, uh, 133 chapters, every chapter containing 10 couplets. So in one couplet he says that from whichever thing you will remove your attachment, from that thing you will have no suffering. So since we run after pleasure, the cause of all the miseries we have in the world is that men foolishly think pleasure to be the ideal to strive for. Since we think that I will get pleasure, we run after that and because we don't get, we are frustrated. So what is suffering? The gap between expectation and achievement. That is suffering. So if we constantly strive for something thinking that we will get, which is an impermanent thing, then we will suffer. So for today we will stop here and uh, shall we continue this every Sunday or what? Yeah, okay. we can do this every Sunday. So if anybody, what time would you... watching, anybody will watch this video, they can come and uh, uh, get into a Skype call. Okay. We will okay. Yeah. New, new name to this. So it will be from 10 to 11 every Sunday. Okay. Can we make okay. it 10 15, Maharaj? Yeah, we can make it 10 15. 10 15 to 11 15. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, good. Okay, Panamaharaj.